Lord James of Blackheath. My lords, a week ago I wrote a letter to the noble lord the speaker in which I suggested that in certain circumstances which might occur, such as this morning, the entire House of Lords is ineligible to sit. Now, I do not intend to pursue this point, but I want to explain why it occurs, and I think it is important to us. If the Lisbon Treaty is allowed to stand and is not wiped away at midnight on the 31st, then we are all, every one single man jack of us, in breach of our oath on joining this House, because we have allowed the omniscience of Parliament to be reduced by the elimination of the veto which was standing in our benefit until the Lisbon Treaty. That has far-reaching consequences which go way beyond ourselves and reach into the palace and the crown itself. And we need to be aware of those implications. If I'm right on that assertion, and I hope I've taken it to the table office and asked them to think about it, so there must be some professional opinions around, then we would be ineligible to sit today, and it would mean that this bill cannot pass the House. I'm not pursuing that, but what I am going to say is that I think the basis on which we are going forward from here is wrong, because we have got a situation in which we are facing a choice between remain, the no-go solution, and as came very much into focus at the latter stages of yesterday, the possible resurrection of the May deal. That the May deal and remain both carry the same consequences that they would still leave us in breach of our oath. And we need to have our oaths restored to us, which would happen if at midnight on the 31st, the Lisbon Treaty was wiped away. Now, the first person we need to be concerned about in that respect is Her Majesty, because we have the power of government placed in our hands by the coronation oath that she swears never to diminish, but we have diminished it for her. In those circumstances, does the British public realise it's being asked to consider a situation in which it might create a position in which Her Majesty would consider it was essential for her to abdicate? If that did occur, would it ever be possible to resurrect the monarchy because nobody else could swear the same coronation oath? So let us be realistic about this. And my whole criticism of the situation of opposition to no-go at the moment is that we simply have not informed the British public at what is in, at stake. It goes way beyond this. Uh, my, we have this wonderful paper called The Yellow Hammer, which tells us all the dreadful things which will happen if we do go no-go. Now, my secretary has got an alternative list, which I have compiled with it, called The Black Vulture, which is my list of the things which they don't know about, which will happen if we don't go no, no deal. And the first of those is the hazard it creates for the crowd. But the second, will somebody please tell us the truth about the European Defence Union. This is by far the biggest issue facing the British public and they know nothing about it officially. Can we please have a proper account of what it entails? Is it really true that the government has entered into private agreements with the European community, that they will, on completion of Remain, or whatever it is to be, transfer to the European Union in Brussels the entire control of our entire fighting forces, including all their equipment? You may, you may jest, my lords, but it has been done and you must check it out. It is too important to ignore. We must know the truth of this. We must have it clear for the whole public to know. Uh, I, I believe it is true and I think we should be told. I have understanding that it is intended that the oath of every serving member of our forces will be cancelled and they will be required to, set, to undertake a new oath of loyalty to Brussels and that we have had, in recent months, I understand, a series, of, a series of people sent from our armed forces to create and install the command and control centres to be used for the control of our troops once we have been ceased to have any control over their use, application or deployment. It goes beyond this. They are to take control of our intelligence services, the whole core of the Five Eyes, they will have MI6, and they will have the Cheltenham Monitoring Centre. And we will be excluded from it under the new arrangements completely and have no access either to its product or I beg your pardon? Order. 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 I wonder if the Double Lord would be prepared to give way just for one moment. 
I think in his interests and the interest of the House, could I just appeal to him to, to conclude, because this is not in either his interests or ours for him to continue.